Hey everybody, this is Rich. Uh, I'm here with um, my friend Terry Gleason and uh, Dr. Scott Harrington. Uh, he'll be joining us today with some questions we have. Um, you, you probably all are familiar with my story, but just a quick introduction. Um, I lost about 150 pounds uh, over eight years ago by going most, mostly plant-based at the time, and I became completely vegan um, in 2016. And uh, I, I was seeking out a uh, plant-based doctor and I uh, came upon Dr. Harrington's name. And uh, I'm proud to have a plant-based doctor finally. And, uh, I, want, I want you to, um, want my audience to hear why uh, it's beneficial to have a plant-based doctor, if you, especially if you're plant-based. So that's my introduction, uh, Terry. My name is Terry Gleason. Um, I'm kind of a, uh, kind of always been in the health and wellness scene from, I used to be a phys ed teacher and then I've kind of moved myself to um, adult fitness. I teach an outdoor boot camp, And before it was cool to work out outside because we have to now, um, I've been doing an outdoor boot camp all year round for the past couple of years. So um, that's something that I really love doing. And then just recently um, I got to nutrition. I'd say about three years ago, I ended up going to a workshop that was called evidence-based nutrition. So it had nothing to do with plant-based or vegan. So I thought, and then when I went, um, my eyes kind of opened to the world of what um, nutrition and the power of nutrition can really do for us. So um, I'm still interested in exercise and fitness, but my, my gears have kind of switched to um, the wonderful world of nutrition because I see how powerful it is. And I've seen how powerful it is in myself um, and, and people around me, so, like you, Rich, and I'm sure a lot of your patients, Dr. Harrington. So that's my little quick intro. Thank you. And Dr. Harrington? All right, hi, my name is Dr. Scott Harrington. I have a, a virtual office where you can receive primary care online in over 42 states called veganprimarycare.com. I can provide primary care and consultations for the treatment of chronic disease through a plant-based diet. I'm available 100% through telemedicine so you don't have to be local. And uh, I'm available for primary care as well as being a one-time consultation if you just want to uh, learn about it. And, uh, and so that's how I met uh, Richard Hubbard. Uh, he reached out to me. And, uh, and so that's why I'm here today and I'm glad to help. Oh, great. So let's get into the questions. Um, my first one is um, what led you to going uh, into plant-based? Well, I, uh, the, the short and simple uh, answer is that I saw Forks Over Knives, the movie, and it was so uh, influential. I saw Dr. Furman, how he was going through with the patients and uh, helping them get off all their medicines. And they went four or five different patients. Uh, and so it really gave me hope as a doctor. But I had seen this movie at a time when I was really ready for the message. It was in 2012 and I had tried to lose weight. As an army doctor, they make you run. And I was gaining one or two pounds a year on a standard American diet, thinking I was eating a very healthy diet, but I was gaining weight. So. I tried to lose weight and I failed miserably. And uh, I, you know, I was trying to eat smaller portions. And, and so that's when, um, after learning about the plant-based diet and, and seeing the movie, I realized that the, the magic, the secret sauce is the plant-based diet. And then I switched, I was able to lose weight relatively effortlessly just by consuming the plant-based diet. And I got down to my 18 year old weight and all my medical problems went away. So after that, it was my primary, my primary recommendation to all my patients because um, what's more powerful than a plant-based diet? You know, the medicines, um, you can, you, they're like band-aids. When you're eating a plant-based diet, you're, you're, you're taking care of the cause of a lot of these medical problems and therefore the patients get better. So uh, I, I was really lucky that uh, I came across it when I did. And so I've been doing it uh, for, for the last uh, eight or nine years. Nice. I find it interesting. It started at the same time as me. In the same year. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. We both were. Yeah. I, was, I, was still, I was still eating chicken and cheese and all that. <laughs> well, oh, we've yeah. all been there. <laughs> like I consider myself a plant-based vegan. Um, it took a little few steps to get to consider myself. I focus on whole plant foods, yet I still kind of dabble in the vegan processed foods just because I, I, I'm used to them. Um, I, I kind of want to maybe wow other people when I bring something, you know, vegan to a party, but maybe Dr. Harrington, you can kind of just touch upon the difference maybe between what plant-based is, what veganism is, is can they kind of live together? Are they two separate things? Um, so maybe just kind of touch on that for maybe people who are confused. 
Okay, okay. So the question is the definition of uh, vegan versus uh, plant-based, can they be used sort of interchangeably? And, um, and, you know, I always use them interchangeably. At, at first, when I was a uh, health vegan, when I was vegan for health, I, I said, well, I'm plant-based. I'm plant-based because I, I guess I didn't want to scare people away because um, my initial impression of people who were vegan were people that were doing it for ethics reasons and that they may be very judgmental. And even though, even though now I'm 100% vegan and I'm doing it ethically, you know, for ethical reasons and for environmental reasons, you know, at first I was kind of worried about how this would be perceived. Well, those days are over. I'm not worried about how I'll be perceived because I totally realized that, you know, the vegan diet is the right way to go for everybody. Now, um, so, but, you know, when I've put, when I've mixed those terms on online, I, there'll be a lot of folks who get kind of upset because of these definitions where the term plant-based uh, can be uh, construed as someone who eats mostly plants, you know, and, but still includes some, uh, you know, animal-based products in their diet. Um, certainly the, the term to me was introduced in, in Forks Over Knives. They were talking about the whole food plant-based diet. And, and the way I interpret that is 100% vegan, you know. Uh, so, but that's how, that's how they're being used. It, it sounds to me that, that lately the way that plant-based is being construed is that it's not necessarily 100%. And then you're just like dabbling and mostly eating plants. But I like to declare that I, I, I've stopped using the plant-based term mostly and now I'm using the vegan term. So everyone 100% knows that um, I recommend zero animal products. Okay, great. Thank you. Next question is how long did it take you to transition when you first um, started being plant-based? Okay, yeah, great, great question. Um, I'd like to approach this question a couple of ways. Uh, I, I just did a, an interview with Corinne Nidger. Uh, she's in Australia. And uh, she, she asked me, she said, did you go cold carrot instead of cold <laughs> turkey? And I had to laugh a little bit about that. And the answer is I actually went cold carrot. I went, just made the cut. You know, the, the, the recommendations when you're making a, uh, a behavior change my, my recommendation oftentimes is to try to just make the behavior change 100% and, and see how you do. You may surprise yourself. Um, you know, at first I wasn't, um, I tried to go 100%, and, but I wasn't really um, getting myself wrapped around black and white thinking if I, I, uh, if I happened to, if something was touching on my plate or someone made me try something or I was at my grandma's house and she made me, you know, eat some roast beef or something, you know. Um, but uh, I, I basically wanted to see the maximum benefit. So I went 100%. And, and it, was, it, was, it was like night and day. Immediately I started to see benefits in the terms of heartburn and things like constipation and, and uh, just your, your overall lightness when you first start, those things happen immediately. And then after a couple of weeks, you stop having acne and you start decreasing allergies and, and things of that nature. And, and, and your weight is, is improving. So yeah, well, it's well, best, to, it's best did, to go all the way. Did you lose your cravings as well um, immediately? I, I eventually, I mean, initially, I actually did have some cravings. It, it was, it was true. And that, you know, I would smell barbecue and walking down, you know, in my neighborhood, or uh, I would, I would have those things. And so at first, I kind of had a gateway drug food of peanut butter. I ate a lot of peanut butter, because I found that very meaty, you know, very, uh, like a strong flavor. And so I, I, I would some, or, or I would, or I would barbecue vegetables and things like that to try to feel like, um, uh, you know, portobellos and things like that so that I could feel like I was getting those meaty flavors. So just to follow up with that, before I ask my next question, um, I'm a certified health and wellness coach as well. I'm, I'm not um, actively part, um, uh, coaching just yet. I'm actually going for my board certification in a week. <laughs> so. All right. Uh, all right. Good luck. Yeah. Slowly, but surely I'll be able to help doctors help their patients. Um, you know, I mean, you're seem so fortunate that you can spend so much time with your patients where some doctors have what, 10, 15 minutes with their patients. 
they could, you know, maybe offer a, a lifestyle change suggestion, but then it's so hard to actually help that patient long term. So um, I know health and wellness coaches are kind of bridging that gap in, in helping patients make the changes. So, and yeah, and we're all about slow changes. Usually that's the, the best approach um, for most people, but I like how you said it. Sometimes you don't really see the change until you just go cold carrot. Um, so if people are able to maybe just maybe for a week or two weeks or, you know, forever, how long, maybe just really eliminate all those inflammatory foods, they can really see the changes that will make them want to keep going. So that's a, definitely a great way to look at it. Um, so, okay, moving on to the next question. So if you couldn't tell from the bags under my eyes and my thinning hair, I had a baby about five months ago and I am so grateful <laughs> that it's like, style before I was um, pregnant. I had a fantastic pregnancy, um, all plant-based and, um, and now currently, you know, breastfeeding my, my five month old, still plant-based. He's healthy. He's wonderful. Um, maybe you can kind of speak to some parents who have not found that plant-based lifestyle yet, or are still confused about it and are a little bit more concerned about just changing things. You know, now that they already have their toddler eating certain foods or, you know, it's hard for them to eat anything. So they just give them chicken nuggets and cheese because that's what Right. Just concerned parents about um, the their concerns about changing over to a, a plant based lifestyle. Right, right. OK, well, this is a great question, Terry, because the kids are kind of the missing link uh, in terms of uh, the diet. And mm -hmm. you, you almost think about it, you know, here we are in the covid pandemic and the kids are the major issue. Like, do we send them to school, this or that? We're mm -hmm. always, you know, this is a lot of times that we're, we revolve around what the kids are doing a lot of times nowadays. And um, it, we are oftentimes willing to experiment on ourselves or try something new. But when it comes to our children, we oftentimes we go back to what we're, how we're raised and what we're used to. Um, it's more, we kind of take a conservative approach with our, our children. Mm -hmm. But if you come to believe that the plant-based lifestyle is the most healthiest for you, it's, you know, it's, you know, then it would almost seem cruel to be giving your kids, you know, animal-based products that increase their risk for cancer, uh, inflammatory illnesses, and, you know, uh, constipation and, and all these. So the, the first thing is that there's going to be a lot of like shame and guilt, and you're going to get these messages from these pe from from uh, people around you who are not uh, plant based or haven't heard the message, mm -hmm. and you may even end up going and looking for advice from your primary care provider or pediatrician, and they may not be plant based, and they may uh, be be providing you with a lot of fear-based approaches to try to have you increasing the protein and this and that in your child, you know, animal-based protein. So the first thing I want to know, and the most clear message I want you to know is that the plant-based diet is the healthiest diet that we have found evidence-based. It's healthy for pregnant ladies. It's healthy for, for, inf you know, for children. Infants should be breastfed until weaned. And then once, the, once they're weaned, yeah, it, it's, plant-based diet is the healthiest diet for them. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, we can go, you can help me by, you know, asking me additional specific questions on this, but that's the number one message that I want to come across. Uh, so there, there's, um, uh, the, uh, in your experience, oh, 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 here's, here's what you, the second part of your question was, what about if you've already started? Well, the answer is that the, the sooner that you can start, the better, because the, the, the aversions to certain foods and the tastes and everything um, are developed over time. Mm -hmm. And so you want to, the sooner you start, the better, basically. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my goal as a health and wellness coach is really to target the young families that maybe haven't already had kids yet, because that, like you said, like that's where setting them on the right path. You know, if, if my William wants to have meat and dairy and cheese when he gets older, that's his choice. But I know I'm going to at least set him up for success um, as best as I know I can. Um, and maybe just a quick follow-up because I had a friend um, who has about 11 month old and um, she asked, "What is, is there a plant-based milk that should be used after breastfeeding is done? Yes, yes. So uh, breastfeeding is the most important thing and to keep breastfeeding 
it, it's working out for you and, and your infant. Um, so, you know, is there a plant-based milk? Yes, but the, the focus should be on continuing to breastfeed. Now I, I'm, you know, I'm a male, so, you know, I can't breastfeed myself. And so it feels a little weird to be telling, you know, women what to do or this or that, yeah. but we all know the evidence is, is uh, for uh, breastfeeding. And what's interesting is World Health Organization recommends breastfeeding till age two. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in, in tribal, tribal um, societies, the breastfeeding may have gone on much longer. Mm -hmm. And so children will naturally wean potentially from two to four years old and sometimes sometimes longer up to like five years you don't see a lot of lactose intolerance uh in 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 humans till um at least till the age of two or sometimes more often after the age of five so the assumption is that naturally we are we are designed to consume breast milk for long longer periods than what's culturally acceptable right now yeah so Feel free. Breastfeeding is where it should, is at, <laughs> and breastfeeding should be the coolest thing around. We should be, you know, everyone should be um, a proponent of breastfeeding. Uh, yeah. Now, that being said, I don't have to breastfeed myself, and I don't know. I don't have to understand the difficulties and 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 this and and the and the feelings of being tied to that mm -hmm. and workplace and pumping and there are, I mean, admittedly, lots of complications. Uh, mm -hmm. with this. But for whatever reason, after you start weaning down or after a percentage of the food intake, the calorie intake is being decreased from breast milk uh, ex exclusively, um, it is important when we switch to the plant-based diet, in general for adults, we keep their weight down by a low calorie density, high fiber intake, and for a little for a little child who's just eating a small you know small volumes of food, we kind of want the opposite. We want it to be high calorie, high fat, uh, and so um, uh, you an easy way to do that is with a milk product. Now I'm not recommending an animal product. I recommend the one that has the most uh, macros that are the most like breast milk is a soy product, soy milk. Okay, great. And so. Um, unsweetened organic soy milk is the most um, is the is the healthiest and most nutrient dense milk product for um, uh, infants. Okay, great. Thank you for that. No, I love that. I have a lot of friends pregnant now. I just found out a, pre a friend yesterday was pregnant. So these are these are great questions. So I can't wait to tell them <laughs> all, right, all, right. all that you told me. Hello, uh, Dr. Harrington, what, what led you to um, start a practice um, devoted to um, vegans? I was, uh, well, you know, I joke around because the um, vegan diet is my number one recommendation. Um, I found myself giving this recommendation to all my patients. And after leaving the military uh, active duty in 2015, I joined Tampa General I worked as a doctor for Tampa General Family Doctor. And I was telling all my patients about the plant-based diet, but you know, sometimes the message was falling on deaf ears. You know, uh, they weren't coming to see me for that. Uh, and so, um, and then over time, just the amount of hours I was working in the family life, work-life balance, I didn't, I was, I was um, wanting more, more family time. So I decided to work online with a company called American Well. And by doing this online job, I got licensed in lots of different states. And so um, after doing that for a while, I was doing urgent care and, and I'm still recommending the plant-based diet to everyone. So I joke around like someone would stub their toe and I would say, well, you know, you should be on the plant-based diet and uh, you know, it'll make that wound heal faster. And eventually it just felt a little ridiculous um, I said, why am I not doing this on my own? Why, why am I not having my own practice where the focus is about veganism and so that I can attract patients who I don't have to beg and recommend that they do this or um, get frustrated if, 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 they're, if they're not interested in health or this, this kind of thing. So by doing this, I've, the patients who come see me are generally very interested in health and performance and you know, healthy lifestyle and curing their illness, and so that's been a real blessing for me. So I've, it's it's been it's really helped my just overall motivation and uh, just it's my passion. 
So yeah. it's been it's been really good. Yeah, to me, it came right at the correct time. I mean, it's the <laughs> perfect timing because I was looking for a plant based doctor, and then I'm sure um, as more and more people go plant based, it was a good timing to start the practice. I think when you did. Yeah. Uh, Terry. Awesome. Awesome. So actually, I read on your website um, that people don't need to be 100% vegan to come see you. So it's not like you're, although you're trying to attract people because you're just laying it out there, what you're most likely going to recommend. Um, it's not like you're turning away people who won't go vegan. Correct. Right. Um, so for those people who will never go vegan, I'm pretty sure every vegan has said, I'll never go vegan. I know I've said that a million times. <laughs> um, so, you know, for the people who maybe just won't go, um, is there any safe amount of animal products to consume? You know, sometimes I hear recommendations of, you know, just less animal products and more plants. Um, and I think some people might feel comfortable in that and not too scared. Um, is there a safe amount of these products that would be okay and you can still be generally healthy or maybe is it vary from person to person? What are your thoughts on that? Okay, so the question is, is there a safe amount uh, of animal protein that is, is, is reasonable or, and, or what do I tell my patients? Do I accept patients who are, are not hundred percent vegan? And, uh, here we go. The answer is yes. You know, it's kind of like smoking, you know, if a patient smokes, I'm going to say, well, that's not a great healthy behavior. And so I recommend that you don't smoke and we, and I'll work through it with you. And I've got anti-smoking meds anyway any healthy behavior, I'm going to try to work towards uh, getting the patient and motivate them to, uh, to, to lead a healthy lifestyle. Um, so, and I'm not going to turn them away. So no matter what people are eating this or that, I, I'm going to, I'm going to help them. And I like to like to think that I'm reasonably easy to talk to, you know, people can tell me anything. So um, please, please, if, 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 uh, if you're vegan curious or you know, but you're not 100% vegan. Don't don't think that I'm going to be you know holding your feet to the fire because that doesn't you know you don't get anywhere that way. Um, but is there a is there a safe level? And I, I would say no. There's not really a safe level. But um, like in the movie Forks Over Knives, they were talking about uh, a dose dependent relationship uh, when they gave um, more whey protein that and, and more casein they were increasing the rates of cancer so they could turn it on or turn it off. And um, dose dependent relationships in the Adventist study where they studied uh, something almost nearly 9,000 patients and they followed them. And the, the highest meat eating group had the worst diabetes and worse obesity. And then it went down, you know, vegetarian, pescatarian, and then all the way down to, to vegan. Mm -hmm. So a dose dependent relationship suggests that the more you eat, the worse you are, the less you eat, the better. Um, in Forks Over Knives, they suggested that if you could keep your calories to less than 10% from animal products, that you would, that you would get um, most of the, the benefits and with, with, with low amounts of uh, neg negative aspects. So, um, but once again, I recommend trying to go all the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, thank you. So what are the pros and cons about uh, telemedicine? Telemedicine, okay. So, you know, it's kind of like, uh, um, sometimes it's hard for people to adopt the technology because it seems a little bit more um, inconvenient or something at first. Like when I first learned about texting, I was annoyed. I was like, ah, texting, <laughs> click, click, click. And I was, having to press those buttons three times to get a, a letter and it was it was awful you know but now I, I would almost prefer texting a message to someone and so yeah. um uber versus taxis you know no one calls a taxi anymore so um i really feel like telemedicine is in a similar similar vein once you use telemedicine and you're at the comfort of your own home and you're not in a waiting room and you're traffic driving and and uh, stressing and all that um you pretty much would prefer telemedicine. So th this is good, but there are limitations. Um, in the office, people will do like vital signs and they can do a few tests and stuff. So if, uh, one way to ameliorate this is to have your own um, uh, you know, vital sign equipment like uh, a pulse ox, little pulse oximeter, you can get them for 20 to $30. Uh, a blood pressure cuff, probably 40 to $50. Um, 
and you can have your own home scale and this and that, you get the most out of a telemedicine visit if you have some of those vital signs equipment. Um, there's exam limitations. So I can't do a heart exam or lung exam uh, on telemedicine. And uh, this can be kind of, um, this hurdle can be overcome with something called the Taito Care device. And more will come out in the future, but this is a device that will record your heart and lung exam, your ear exam and your throat. Um, and, the, and the providers can, can look in here. And, and so sort of the, you know, uh, Honestly, sort of the last frontier is a well woman exam. Uh, I know it sounds kind of creepy or whatever to be talking about that, but <laughs> the, it is important to have an OBGYN uh, for a well woman exam, or if you require any type of procedures uh, uh, of any type, um, you need to have your procedure-based specialist. But primary care and most things like that is probably going to move to 100% telemedicine. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure some of those devices you're talking about eventually will be covered by insurance you know, as we go on. Right now, my insurance doesn't cover those devices, but it'd be great to see in the future that you know, more insurance companies are on board. Yeah, that, that is, that's just a shame. You know, uh, it, it, it's a, insurance companies are sometimes slow to adopt uh, the technology. I, I know that there was issues initially with the coronavirus where in Congress they were making rules saying that that uh, that, you sh that telemedicine should be re reimbursable and the um, uh, reimbursement for a regular visit. Well, now I'm thinking about how I'm getting a pet smear over. Our <laughs> 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 and actually maybe along the lines of that, um, talking about just well women health and stuff. Um, I know myself, as well as a few friends that I have, um, and I'm sure many, many more people, women uh, are dealing with inter in infertility these days. And I know I went to a workshop with um, Dr. Neil Bernard, and he has a book called, um, the, actually, it's, it's about hormones, and I'm just, the title of the book is just um, um, not coming to me. And, um, and part of the book was about infertility and how a plant-based diet could help infertility. Um, obviously regulating hormones, we're not eating animal products with hormones in them, kind of kind of messing up our body. And maybe is there any, um, maybe you can speak to that. Is there any benefit of a plant-based diet to help with infertility? Have you seen that in your practice or have you seen that uh, maybe in any research? Yeah, so I, uh, with, in terms of fertility, uh, there, there's a couple of issues. One is uh, obesity, obesity mm -hmm. uh, and the decreased fertility rates. Uh, people tend to be more fertile when they have the lower BMI um, uh, uh, scores. Okay. So, um, and I, I've, I've seen uh, fertility based topics uh, uh, in Dr. Greger's nutritionfacts.org. He has a couple of videos about um, ovulation and increased fertility on a plant-based diet. And uh, so it's, it's evidence-based, but um, in terms of the, the biggest problem and, and sort of a very sad scenario is when you have someone who's having alterations of their menstrual cycle and they're not ovulating and, and they're overweight and maybe they are having PCOS. Um, uh, and, and so I, have, I try to help people get on a plant-based diet and once they tend to lose weight and they start ovulating again and their fertility picks up. So um, it's, it's, uh, it's very important. It's very important for fertility. All right, thank you. Um, have you had any um, backlash from colleagues or your peers uh, that you're um, you know, a vegan doctor? So I imagine um, probably years ago, you would have gotten more backlash, but what, what, is, what do some of your uh, colleagues say? Well, I, I, uh, I hate to say it, but it's true. I've had, uh, I've had some backlash. I, I don't wanna mention names to the yeah. providers uh, because I'm sure they were well-meaning. But, you know, in the past, you know, some of my, some of my colleagues have been like, gosh, you know, Scott, you're always talking about this lifestyle medicine stuff, you know, all you're, you're worried about trying to get people to, uh, you know, lose weight and, and get off their medicines. You, you've got to stop doing that, you know, uh, because you're turning patients away, you know? So when I, when I, when this wasn't my, um, when I didn't have this as my business model, when I was working for other, other places and I was a, a, a doctor and I was recommending this as my primary um, recommendation, it, I, think it, I think there might've been some patients who actually complained, 
actually complained that, you know, all this doctor wants to talk about is how I eat, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I must not have got the message to them. And so they, the, the, the organization would tell me like, hey, some of the patients were complaining that you didn't want to provide them with a ton of, you know, narcotic medications and you wanted to talk to them about diet and a healthy lifestyle. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, sometimes when you're a doctor, you're actually, uh, you, ideally, I don't, I never get in sort of a, um, a confrontation, I guess you could say with patients, but sometimes the patients will actually want something from you that might not be in their best interest, might not be the healthiest thing to do. And, and in that manner, you have to try to politely um, you know, like redirect the scenario or something, you know, it, yeah. But uh, I had, that was a long time ago. And, uh, you know, I keep, I keep thinking after the game changers and some of these movies that have come out that all providers are just going to be plant-based and, uh, and that kind of thing would be a thing of the past, but alas, it hasn't happened yet. Right. So. <laughs> Maybe eventually. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think also just be, just like kind of focusing maybe on children, um, and their nutrition, setting them on the right foot, kind of pre-medicine and these, and these students going into medicine now, you know, I think a, a great focus is on them because they, um, they're the ones that won't be growing old and hardened with, um, you know, unhealthy weight. So my hope is that um, things are changing. Lifestyle medicine is at least a buzzword. Um, and my hope is that um, college students now going into medicine will hopefully at least understand whether they're plant-based or not, they'll at least understand the benefits of, of lifestyle medicine. Absolutely. Have you guys, have you guys had experience where uh, you've had providers that were kind of pushing the, uh, you know, yeah. animal-based type of... Uh, yeah, uh, that's why I seeked you out uh, because... Um, <laughs> My um, previous doctor, he said to me, you mean you don't even eat fish or eggs? So that made me think, oh, he, he just doesn't get it. <laughs> yeah. Right. How yeah. about you, Terry? Yeah, I mean, no, nothing specific like that. But I think, you know, I probably was a very difficult patient um, in the sense that I'm seemingly healthy. I, I'm exercise. I, I'm thin. I, you know, uh, there's nothing seemingly wrong with me. So, um, I mean, just real quick, uh, the reason that I kind of really sought out uh, a lifestyle change is I was always constantly tired throughout my life. And, you know, like we kind of brush it off as like, oh, they're college students. Of course they sleep till noon and go to bed at 5 a.m. What, you know, just kind of, it kind of just seemed like that was just kind of like normal. Um, but then it just never went away. Like after college, getting into my first job and just constantly tired, you know, but I was still able to exercise. I was still able to, you know, have a social life and do things, you know, so it wasn't, it was interrupting my life, but it wasn't that bad. Um, and I, I actually went for a sleep study and I remember the doctor in hindsight, you know, never asked me about nutrition. I guess just kind of saw me, saw my blood work, thought I was, you know, pretty healthy. So, you know, okay, we'll send you for a sleep study to figure things out. And, um, and through that, I actually got put on, on medication. I forget the name of the medication right now, but a medication to keep me more awake. And that was probably about, you know, six or seven years. And then, you know, throughout my journey, finally real, discovering plant-based nutrition, when I finally switched over to my diet, I was like, whoa, I'm, I, this is what good feels like. So I think I try to advocate for those people who think they're healthy, but don't really realize what healthy is and what, what feeling good feels like. Um, I mean, cause I just feel so much better than my old self and my old self wasn't even really that bad. Um, so I know I kind of butt heads with some people who, you know, the person who doesn't have diabetes, doesn't have high blood pressure, doesn't have all these things that, you know, you think you would have on a, on an unhealthy diet, but things could be better um, if only they would give plant-based nutrition a, a shot. So that's kind of, uh, my little story. I never had a doctor ask me about nutrition. It was always like, oh, well, are you sleeping enough? Are you, I, mean, I don't even really remember the questions. It was more of just like, oh, maybe there's just something, my chemical imbalance or something like that. They always kind of just gave a, a skirting around the issue and they never really asked me, okay, well, what do you eat? Um, and I wasn't, again, I wasn't really that unhealthy. I ate chicken and cheese and, you know, I'd have a side of vegetables every now and then. And, you know, I ate everything low fat. If there was like fat cookies, I would eat those because those are healthier. So, um, you know, my 
complete perception or my complete, complete understanding of nutrition is completely like the opposite now. You know, anything that's processed, I know isn't the best for me, whether it's fat free, whether it's cholesterol free, whether it's vegan, um, you know, during definitely focusing on whole foods has what really helped me feel my best. And then you have a baby and you feel like crap again, but <laughs> <laughs> it's, it could be worse. I could only imagine if I was my old self and had a baby, how terrible this would be, you know? Um, so thank God I'm at least, you know, having a sleepless nights. Oh, the sleep, the sleep is the worst part, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I see why they use it as a form of torture. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering actually maybe, um, is there any patient stories that you wouldn't mind sharing with us? Um, anybody that stood out a, a patient of yours who maybe was reluctant to do a, a lifestyle change or, or excited to either way and, and really kind of saw the power of nutrition um, once they started eating more plant-based? Do you have any maybe patient stories you can share? Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to share any names, but um, I, there's... Uh, I mean, there, there's, there's, there's countless stories. I mean, just yesterday I was meeting with a patient and they're saying, oh, thank, thank you so much for telling me because, you know, since I stopped dairy, I no longer have any allergies or sore throat and my acne's improved. And, uh, you know, my, uh, a good, good, good friend who, who I've seen their son after going off dairy, he had horrible eczema, hor just awful eczema and we felt like there was no hope like wow his eczema is so bad and he's allergic to everything and and since stopping the uh the dairy his eczema is completely resolved and it's like magic and yeah. and uh, i mean there's there's all sorts of stories it, it, i mean one of the things that i've found um most impressive is that you know, like when, when, on Forks Over Knives, when Dr. Furman was getting, you know, the person started with 10 to 15 medicines and he's, mm -hmm. oh, okay, we'll get you off all these medicines, you know, and just going through and just the idea that you could get through these medicines, but uh, get, uh, that you could cure these chronic diseases. But m many of the diseases like that I, I found most impressive were asthma. Asthma, you don't think of asthma as something that's coming from your diet, but mm -hmm. as an autoimmune issue, asthma and eczema, they're atopic illnesses. And, and so th these things res resolve or get dramatically better. Uh, other things that I, that I found that were kind of counterintuitive were the idea of things like multiple sclerosis, these horrible debilitating diseases that is almost stroke-like syndromes in the brain where uh, areas of the brain would get inflamed. Uh, through things like the Swank diet, basically a low fat plant-based diet, uh, they're able to stop having flares of multiple sclerosis. And there's the movies like Code Blue, the doctor who had uh, multiple sclerosis stopping from having flares and improving. I mean, this is life-changing information and we need to all be like singing it from the, from, from the mountaintop, you know? Uh, and ulcerative colitis, people, um, you know, have family members with colitis and switching to a plant-based diet and you know that's low in alcohol you can basically cure cure ulcerative colitis mm -hmm. uh, so it's just there's there's more and more story every every specialty every specialty every system it, it mm -hmm. seems to improve yeah how long do you think you i mean i guess it depends on the 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 disease or the the, the circumstance but how long does it take to see improvements when you go plant-based do you think yeah, so um, there, there's some things that are immediate, some things are a little bit longer. So, um, so heartburn, heartburn is a, is a quick one. Uh, if you're eating low fat and animal uh, and plant based, your your heartburn improves dramatically, really quickly. Um, constipation, constipation is something that we all don't realize. We're all constipated. All Americans, we're all we're all constipated, having a bowel movement like once every other day or maybe you know a hard bowel movement once a day that improves dramatically very quickly with one to two days solved you know constipation uh acne tends to take about four weeks okay. uh, three to four weeks uh to dramatically improve your, your skin and uh you can lose about one pound a week uh you know and uh that's that's when you really switch to low fat uh vegan diet one pound a week, so weight starts to come off. 
Um, blood pressure is variable. If you're really eating low salt and a lower on the protein scale, you can see dramatic improvements in, in uh, three or four days. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it, if you go on a water fast, blood pressure is like that. It just, it's cured immediately, um, uh, oftentimes. Uh, now, if you have significant vascular damage and vascular changes and narrowing at the renal artery, you, I mean, that may not cure it initially. Uh, and so uh, the, in terms of, yeah, like very uh, changes like atherosclerosis and this kind of thing, it has been proven that it can be reversed. Dr. Ornish and Dr. Esselstyn both proven these, but these studies were over like two years in seeing the, the changes. Um, and so just like your body can change from weight, you're also changing internally uh, mm -hmm. as the body remodels itself. So, but th these are more long-term changes. Some issues might, will get better, you know, within the matter of a couple of days to a couple of weeks. Right, some issues right. we didn't even realize that we have. Like I didn't realize that my tiredness was probably from my diet and, you know, going plant-based. I wasn't looking to cure anything or lose weight. And, you know, I had a side effect of being more energetic. So it was very surprising. Yeah, and I also want to say that um, I had a friend who um, tried um, a vegan challenge I was doing um, uh, January prior to this one. And her asthma actually improved. I think it took maybe a, a week or so, but she noticed just by giving up the dairy um, that her asthma is a big difference. So I do have to say, uh, it, it does work for asthma too. I, I learned from friends. Right. Yeah. Um, my next question is, um, uh, after COVID, hopefully it goes away sometime this year. <laughs> after COVID, do you expect to open a um, practice um, brick and mortar one as well? Or do you just want to still focus on telemedicine? My goal starting this was to be 100% telemedicine because I wanted to be able to offer the, all the services that I provide through, you know, to all the states. Um, but I might be forced to do a brick and mortar uh, once per week or something like that for uh, insurance reasons, because some of like, for instance, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield, which is one of the largest insurance companies throughout, you know, the United States has refused to offer me um, until I have a brick and mortar. They, they say, oh, we, we, don't just, we don't just do just telemedicine, you know? So um, I, might, I might be kind of forced to do a brick and mortar, but with my goal is mostly to do telemedicine. It offers me, you know, I can do this from the comfort of my own home and be near my family. And so it's like a win-win. Right. Mm -hmm. Cool. Very interesting with insurance reasons and, and why you have to do certain things to kind of get around this. It's, it's yeah. very exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> Right. I'm sure. Positive thing I have to say about insurance is uh, if it wasn't for the insurance uh, requirements eight years ago, over eight years ago, I don't know how long would it take taken me to make lifestyle changes because that forced me to do a physical finally. You know, they forced they forced the annual physical, which I hadn't gotten done in years. So I, I guess there's pros and cons with insurance, but yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. No, absolutely. I mean, I wish I wish our insurance uh, system was less fraught with, you know, complications and everything. But uh, I mean, we should we should all have insurance. We should have the ability to get our health care paid for. Uh, you know, my personal feeling is that uh, that there should be a, a system of preventative medicine that is is Definitely. just offered for our citizens in the U.S. Just because. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've been in the military and I think about things uh, in terms of um, how, how is our competitiveness with other countries and, yeah. and gosh, don't you want your, don't you want your population to be healthy and, you know, uh, you, you know, productive and this and that. So it would be, it would be, if I was the one in charge, I would, uh, that would be something that would be a subsidized service as preventative services. Uh, that's, uh, that's my two cents. <laughs> I totally agree. Scott Harrington, 2024? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, I have a burning question from my mom. Okay. So I walked into the house today. I'm here because she's watching my, my, uh, my, my son as I'm doing this interview. And, um, and I know I'm so proud of her. She definitely gotten the vegan message. You know, I think, you know, 
I don't mean to say it in a, in a rude way, but when you're kind of set in your ways, it's very hard to change. Well, we always ate like this and this is what we always did. And this is what my mom did and whatever. So, you know, I think she always seeks out the vegan labels on things. And, you know, I look in the refrigerator and there's soy milk and almond milk. And, you know, I see those, I'm just so proud of her. Um, she pulls out the, the margarine and it's vegan. And she goes, this is good, right? This is better than butter, right? And, you know, just so kind of, you know, it, it's the marketing that kind of gets confusing. So maybe if you can just answer the question is um, margarine or any kind of like butter spread that's vegan, is that better? Is it just as bad? Is there any benefit to it? Or what's your thoughts on that? All right. All right. <laughs> well, certainly butter is bad. We, we know this. Butter uh, is bad, uh, right? <laughs> Not, tell them. Doctor, we notice. Yeah. Like, uh, but um you have to use the the idea of compared to what the compared to what thing um, is 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 our, our margarine or the uh, plant based plant based butters uh, healthier than butter and the answer to that is yes yes because of the saturated fat component in in uh, in butter uh, so these. Uh, plant-based butters or plant-based uh, or other oils, like is olive oil healthier than butter? Yes, yes it is because it's more polyunsaturated fats, monounsaturated fats. Um, and so, but in general, in general, these are kind of empty calories, mm -hmm. this, this, this. And, and all of us remember the empty calorie concerns about Coca-Cola or, you know, sodas and having you know a lot of sugar, sugar you know is an empty calorie. There's it's not a whole food. It doesn't come with vitamins and minerals and fibers and all the benefits. And so these oils are the very same way. They're just empty calories. We're just and so you want to try to limit them as much as possible. Now we're used to with the typical standard diet spreading butter all over the stuff. And if you need to have a a substitute, and certainly that's better than butter. Mm -hmm. But you should try to get away from this. This has been sort of like a problem at our house. I'm like, why are we eating all this, you know, fake butter? <laughs> we got to get away from this, you know, yeah. because, because it's just extra calories. It's just going to, you know, moment on the lips, you know, lifetime on the hips kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from the lips to the hips. Yeah. All right, and actually maybe just led into my last question I have. You know, um, I know you said you mentioned you had a wife and uh, do you have children too? Yes, yes, uh, 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 two children, 13 year old boy and eight year old uh, girl. And oh, nice. I assume the household is vegan or how's that, how's that dynamic at home? Yes, well, it is the number one topic of conversation at all times, <laughs> uh, uh, my poor, poor kids. Uh, so I'm 100% I'm vegan and they're vegan-ish. Uh, sometimes, you know, when they're at friend's house, they, you know, will, will partake of, uh, of various foods and stuff. Um, and my wife, bless her heart, you know, she's always, uh, you, you know, cooking and, and, and uh, making vegan, vegan, tasty vegan meals for us. Uh, but, uh, you know, I haven't, haven't held her to the fire about, you know, you have to do this or whatever. And, and they're coming around, you know. Um, the, one of the things I wanted to bring out, uh, uh, when I knew we were meeting together, uh, I, I knew that, you know, the idea of plant-based diet, vegan diet with children, and it's, it's hard sometimes when the kids are at school and they're, you know, whether they're being, you know, ridiculed or they're not like their peers, you know, that can be a really, really frustrating yeah, thing. Sense, yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed. You know, my eight-year-old is always like, I can't believe you guys are eating all those animal products. That's <laughs> disgusting. You know, I am. it's exactly the opposite of what I would expect. I would expect, you know, <laughs> as an eight-year-old, you'd be worried. And, and she's like, tough yeah. stuff, you know. Yeah, she's like, good for her. You know, I'm so, yeah, I'm impressed. And, and my, my son's that way too. So he's, he's kind of a trendsetter among, among his friends. Great, great. But they, they, they do end up partaking, of, you know, they're kids and they, they like, you know, um, so some more, some of the junk food, vegan stuff they're into, uh, you know, and I try to do my best uh, leading by example. And they're like, God, course, dad, yeah. I can't believe you eat all those greens, you know, <laughs> it just grosses them out, I think. But, uh, you know, you do your best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I try to tell, whether it's just a friend or, um, a, you know, future clients is, you know, you can't force anything. And I think definitely with children, when you say do this, 
you don't, you don't want it to uh, attribute to something that they're being forced to do. So yes, I think leading by example is the number one thing for parents to do. You know, a lot of parents say, well, my kids never eat this stuff. Well, what do you eat? <laughs> so yeah. it's try to look at your own self as parents and just see what you're modeling. Um, and then, you know, your, your children are most likely going to be, they won't do as you say, they'll do as you do. Absolutely. The more you can get them involved in, uh, in, in making the foods and the healthy foods and chopping, they're all excited about all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, even if you can get them involved with the shopping or trying to decide what, what's gonna, what they're going to cook, then they're more likely to try it. Um, yeah. I, when I was, I was researching an article on how to get kids to eat vegetables, because like I said, they're kind of like the linchpin. They're mm -hmm. the keystone uh, because uh, if they're not eat, if they're not eating plant based, then then it's that's going to rub off on you, and you're gonna you're making the food, and you're gonna uh, end up eating unhealthily. Mm -hmm. So, the the way you get them to eat plant based is uh, is introduce when you're introducing a new food, you have to pretend it's almost like learning a song. Okay. When when you hear a new song, the lyrics are weird. You don't like the tempo and everything, and you basically don't like it. You know. And it takes you a little while, about 10 to 15 times of hearing the song where you know the lyrics, you know, you can you, you anticipate what's going to happen. And the same thing was with food. You know, we have this natural aversion to not like new and different things. It's a, a safety mechanism uh, in our evolution that if if we're trying foods that, that are weird or new or dangerous, we're going to, we're initially going to have an aversion to them. Mm -hmm. You have to learn a flavor, learn a taste. So it may take 10 to 15, 20 tries of, of getting a new food, um, especially something like vegetables are tend to be bitter and not like uh, fruit you might pick up immediately. That might be like a, a pop 40 hit fruit, you know, because <laughs> you don't need a lot of trials on that. But things like vegetables or things that are more bitter or things, mushrooms and stuff, uh, you may have to ch start with little unintimidating uh, portions. Uh, and one sort of trick is to, if you have a new food is to put a couple sauces out there that make anything taste good, you know, like mustard or, you know, ketchup, I guess, or teriyaki or, or something like that. And you can have them dip the food in different sauces and taste it and kind of, they can see the food and kind of get learned and, and, and you're tricking them because they're tasting the sauce, but they're, but they're, the vehicle is the food. It's yeah. just a little trick that I tell people and it's, it's worked in the past. Great. Awesome. I just have one other question. You made me think of it um, when you were talking about um, sauces for veggies. Um, is there um, one that's better than the other? Uh, if you compare the liquid aminos like coconut and soy, because I love coconut uh, liquid aminos. And I'm wondering, is there much difference uh, between them? Health-wise, gosh, I, I actually don't I don't know the answer to that question, uh, Richard. I uh, my assumption is that uh, both of those uh, products tend I would assume are high in um, high in the salt. The salt aspect is probably the worst part about it. But yeah, I look um, for the lower salt ones. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but I mean, if you're just using a little bit, you know, for flavoring, I, I don't see them as like off limits, so to speak. I tend to recommend against coconut oil because it's, right. it's high in saturated fat, but I don't think aminos would be uh, a problem. Yeah, it uh, says zero uh, percent. Yeah, yeah. Saturated fats. So um, I, I, I will tell people, you know, because salads, when salad is the main dish, you know, uh, every lunch, it, it, it's kind of a boring kind of situation. So you have to, you have to focus on the dressing. Mm -hmm. And when we do that, we tend to use oily dressings and that can be unhealthy. You can turn a salad into something reasonably unhealthy with a high fat dressing. So um, the, the no oil dressings tend to be based in citrus, uh, mustard, or uh, vinegar, or uh, teriyaki. Those are just some of the things uh, to use as, as a base for, um, for a lot of uh, no oil dressings. And that can really get you through a lot of salads and get it past the lips. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I've been loving um, experimenting with salad dressings that are oil free. Like what can it, so um, I'll share with one, I don't know the exact recipe, but it was in a creamy something and it used white beans. So I put in like the white, basic white beans in a blender with all the spices and mixed it up and it was creamy, you know, a little bit of water to thin it out and it was creamy and it tasted great. 
and you know the can of beans I had was already kind of salted so that kind of added the flavor but in general you're having a salad dressing based in beans so what a thought. <laughs> awesome yeah, yeah, yeah. You're good. awesome awesome yeah yeah like or, or hummus you can use hummus oh, as a base and kind of perfect. water it down uh with with more lime juice lemon juice and yeah uh there's lots of options one of the things about the plant-based diet that that I was impressed by is that when you switch away from chicken, pork chops, and uh, you know meat or whatever, you know your options seem pretty limited actually, and you get used to your top three meats or whatever. Mm -hmm. But when you're switching to a vegan diet, it's like wow, all these different things I could try. It's yeah. a whole new, whole new exciting realm, a whole new way of life. So it's a lot of fun yeah. actually. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a good way to look at it is you're giving up, but what you're gaining when you uh, maybe just eliminate those, the, the, the few animal products that we kind of send to our dishes around, when we eliminate that, it just, you gain so much more than you're giving up. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm always wondering, you know, how these uh, vegan chefs, you know, what kind of cool, um, you know, concoction they're going to come up with, yeah. because it really kind of blows the lid off the, the constraints in a way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, that, that's all the questions I had. Uh, Terry, did you have any more? Yeah, that's pretty much all the questions I had too. I mean, I probably could keep you here all day long with all my questions, but um, I, I know you do a live session every Wednesday at one o'clock. Is that on like either whether it's Facebook live? Yes. Yes. So um, I use the, uh, I use the uh, stream yard. And so I'm able to stream to Facebook, uh, YouTube, Twitter and Twitch, believe it or not. I don't know if there's a single person on Twitch watching. <laughs> it's all people playing video games. But uh, so I'm able to do that. Uh, I'm still working out Instagram. I think I may have to do a separate Instagram live if I okay. want to do Instagram too. But um, I'm just trying to get the word out. Uh, it's my passion and and I'm trying to help as many people as I can. Well, it's working. I mean, yeah. Yeah, we, we both found you and <laughs> you know this well too. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, guys, thanks. Thanks for reaching out to me. And I, I'm, I'm glad to be on this and I'm glad to come back on anytime in the future if you want, if, you, if there's any other questions. Well, then, yeah, I appreciate that. And, um, you know, I just wanted to get the word out there about your practice too, because um, I'm definitely a fan because, uh, you know, I, I, like I tell people, I was looking for a plant-based doctor. And, you know, it's so awesome that, you, that you're out there and available for people. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I I, I can't tell you enough how, uh, how what an honor it is. Yeah, and thank you for being so just lively and energetic about this. Um, it definitely the personality behind the information that we don't want to hear is helpful. So having just a nice, really great attitude um, about something that might be a little scary for people, I think definitely helps soften the uh, the information that we're trying to give. So thank you so much for being such an advocate for uh, for the plant-based health style and just lifestyle medicine in general. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome.